In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. What does it mean for us to be saved? What does it mean for us to say what salvation looks like? I hope that that's a question uh, that uh, all of us ask all of the time, because the answer to that question, or how we answer that question, uh, Lord willing, will be kind of the starting place and the first principle of every single thing that we really do in our life. What does it mean to say that we are saved? What, is our, what does our salvation look like? And of course, I think oftentimes the temptation for us uh, to answer that question is to think about a place, to say, my salvation looks like entering and stepping into heaven. And being done, right? That's what we tend to think about. Well, unfortunately, that's not right. Even though we might tend to think that way, the way that the Orthodox Church thinks about salvation is far more uh, intense, far more dynamic than just thinking about entering into a physical space, a physical place. For us to say that we are saved and what our salvation looks like is, is, as I said, just far more dynamic than that. And so, thanks be to God, the uh, fathers of the church gave us, as the second Sunday of Great Lent each and every year, the Sunday of St. Gregory Palamas. Now, we have his icon here in the nave. He is here on the right-hand side of the, the big icon of the Nativity, and so he's always here with us, praying for us but especially on this day, the second Sunday of Great Lent. Because at the time of St. Gregory Palamas, which was in the uh, 13th, the most of the, the 14th century when he lived, he was a monk on Mount Athos, and he spent the last 15 or so years of his life uh, as the Archbishop of uh, Thessalonica. And he was known as a great wonder worker, but he is very well known also for his teaching. Because, as is the case now, and so much of the time, as was the case back then, 600 or so years ago, uh, when people talked about salvation, they wanted to talk only about what they knew in their brains. And they wanted to make a checklist. And they wanted to be able to say, I do this, I do this, I do this, heaven. But as is the case then, as has always been the case, as is the case now, we don't make a checklist and think about going and following directions to get to a place. St. Gregory talked about our salvation in terms of completely being transformed. And he used even the word, and our fathers of the church use a, a big word that sounds a little difficult for us, but it's this word deification to talk about our salvation. Or theosis is what is said sometimes. And that word to be deified, when we think of what does it mean to be deified, we also might have a false idea that it means that I'm going to be equal with God. That's not what the Orthodox Church is talking about when we talk about deification as what our salvation looks like. Because to be deified means to be conformed to the likeness of God. We are created in the image and likeness of God. That's what we are created to do from the very beginning. And so actually what our salvation is, being conformed to that image and likeness of God, is actually living up to exactly what it is that we were created to be from the beginning, which is in the image and likeness of God. And we do that by partaking and participating in the divine nature, as St. Peter says in his epistle. Now, that might sound extraordinarily difficult to do, and it is, because our salvation, again, is far more dynamic than we oftentimes think that it is. But the fathers, St. Gregory and all the fathers before him and all the fathers after him, talked about salvation in kind of this three-step process, purification, illumination, and finishing with deification. Purification, illumination, and deification. Now, the Gospel reading this morning gives us a great example of what at least those first two things might look like. Purification and illumination. Because in the Gospel this morning, we hear about our Lord who is teaching in a room that cannot hold all of the people that want to be there to hear his teaching. 
I kind of envision like a great big living room, you know, not, not even something as the, the size of this, but a big living room of someone's home and the windows are open and people kind of have their heads poking through the window because they want to hear what Jesus is saying and the door is open and there are people kind of gathering around and those who are at the windows are whispering to the people behind them what Jesus is actually saying because we're talking about a huge crowd that's there because a man brought by four of his friends on a stretcher. He's on a stretcher because he's paralyzed. He's brought by four of his friends and they can't get to Christ. Now they know something about Christ. They know that he is a healer because they've heard of the great miracles that he is able to do, but they can't get to him. And so they do everything they possibly can to get to the feet of Christ. Even taking this man and bringing him all the way up to the roof. I'm imagining ropes and pulleys. Opening up the, the roof and those same ropes and pulleys being let down so that the man can be there at the feet of Jesus there in the room. Purification. They did everything that they could to see Christ in front of them. That's what purification is doing everything that we possibly can to have Christ right in front of us and to experience him, not just to know something about him, to hear about him, to hear that he's a healer, to maybe even hear that he's the son of God and to read the scriptures, but to ourselves experience Christ with our whole being, having him right in front of us. That's what they were doing. And purification for us then, most of the time, the thing that hinders us from seeing Christ and being with Christ as fully as we possibly can be, of course, is ourselves, our own sinfulness. And so the first thing about purification is repentance and being able to see the things that are not according to the image of God, not according to his likeness, and taking those things away. Reading the scriptures, praying at home, praying in the church as well, but also, I love that the example that these men give to us is that it's also about serving others. That it's in the action of loving our neighbor that they were actually able to get to the feet of Christ. And so it's doing everything that we possibly can to get to the feet of Christ, and that is purification. And what was the illumination that these men beheld? Well, again, they knew that Christ was a healer, but Christ doesn't heal the man first. He illumines their hearts, he illumines their knowledge of him by doing something even more profound. He says, your sins are forgiven. And that's even bigger than what they knew about him or what anybody else had told them about who Jesus actually is. Because by him saying that your sins are forgiven, he was declaring, I am God in the flesh. Because only God can forgive sins. And that was the illumination that these men were able to have about who the person of Jesus Christ is. And that's the illumination that we have as well. When we repent, when we pray, when we serve others, and we do all that we can to be in the presence of God, we are illumined with not just special things that we might know about him, but by being in his presence, we begin to know who he truly is. And by knowing who he truly is, we know more about who we are called to be. And we are then able to, by the grace of God, work towards that deification that our salvation really is. Purification, illumination, deification. Now we might be sitting there thinking, well, where am I on, that, on those three? And I really wish it were that easy as well. Because most of the time, it's not purification, illumination, deification there. Most of the time, it's something like this. We're purified and we see Christ, and then we need to be purified some more to see Christ better, and then we are illumined and we are, need to be purified and see Christ more, and then we are illumined and we need to be purified and see Christ more, and then we are illumined and we are slowly going along that track and path to deification, but sometimes it feels like we have to take a step back. Because as we are illumined, we see ourselves more clearly. And we see our need to repent, our need to throw ourselves at the feet of Christ, our need to be forgiven, our need to be healed. 
And that's what our salvation is, brothers and sisters. It's not about stepping into a place, but it's about our entire being being transformed and conformed to the image and likeness of God. That is what our salvation is, and that is something that is an eternal reality. Because the kingdom of heaven is not just a static place, location that we go. It will be that place where we will continue to be purified, we will continue to be illumined, and we will continue to be deified for all time. That is the dynamic eternal life and kingdom of heaven that our Lord promises us and that he prepared for us by coming and taking on our flesh so that we can be purified, so that we can be illumined, so that we can be deified. Now, every single quote on the back of your bulletin this morning is from St. Gregory Palamas, and I very much encourage you to read that and know that that's not just the tip of the iceberg. These are just the little snowflakes at the very tip of the iceberg that is the writings of St. Gregory Palamas. There's so much out there, but I'll leave you with just one for this morning. The second to last one on there, St. Gregory gives us a very blessed encouragement and challenge. He says, let us cast off, brethren, the works of darkness and let us perform the works of light that we may not only walk honestly as in the day, but also become children of the day. And come, let us go up to the mountain where Christ shone forth, or rather, if we become children worthy of that day, The word of God himself will take us up when the time comes. Now, I beseech you, strive to lift up the eyes of your understanding towards the light of the gospel message, that you may be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And having acquired the divine brightness from above, be conformed to the likeness of the glory of the Lord, whose face shone like the sun today on the mountain. Purification, illumination, deification. May that be our hope. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.